Blog Talk Radio. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why y'all so happy? And you don't know. Charvette Mitchell is on the radio. It's time to get motivated, excited, and, and, and influenced. Why? It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, live from Richmond, Virginia. And now, here to motivate, excite, and influence you, Charvette, Charvette Mitchell. Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia, but heard all across the world, wide web. Hey, dolls. Hey, gents. Thank you so much for checking us out here for another phenomenal show. Hopefully you are enjoying your week wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for all those that hang out with us throughout the week on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all those great places. So, if you are listening in and you are hanging out on Twitter, hey, uh, make sure you follow me, twitter.com slash Charvette. Go ahead and tweet about the show. Um, if you're hanging out with us on Facebook, we say hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to all of those that are uh, joining us. We say hello, hello, hello. Certainly for those that are listening in from my mobile app and from Charvette.com, we can't do it without you. So we say hello. Welcome to another phenomenal show. And all of our broadcast stations, we say hey, hey girl, hey. <laughs> all right. So listen, I got to jump in and tell you about today's show and who I have that I am featuring. So we're starting the top of the hour out uh, with a dynamic young lady that is in the virtual green room right now. I know she's enjoying some virtual snacks. Pastor Cheryl Jones Ross. Oh, my goodness, she's editor-in-chief of Heels Magazine. Uh, She is a pastor, pastor of Greater Hope Restoration Ministries, and she is here to talk. Uh, We want to learn a little bit about her, about the magazine, and just empowerment. Uh, I'm telling you what, you will be blessed. And then, listen, we don't want you to move because in our second segment, we have Pastor Deborah Sanford Smith joining us. She's an author. author. She's a missionary. She has a new book out called All Things Well. Back in 2013, Pastor Deborah was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, which certainly uh, is a shocking, uh, a shocking diagnosis. But I'm telling you what, she is here as a living witness to talk about it, so you don't want to miss it. You want to stay tuned and keep it locked right here. All right. So, again, go ahead and tweet it out. Go ahead and tell people what you're listening to. Tell them to come on and join us uh, here on the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. So let me go ahead and bring up, again, my first guest. I'm really honored uh, to have Pastor Cheryl Jones Ross joining us. Oh, my goodness. Pittsburgh, PA, is in the house. Greater Hope Restoration Ministries is in the house, and Hills, Go- Hills Gospel Magazine, I'm going to throw that in, is in the house. Coming up to the mic right now, uh, Pastor Cheryl, welcome to the show. Oh, my God. I am just so um, extremely honored to um, be um, invited to be on your show and watching you for some time and following you when you are doing some exciting, exciting things. I'm in the kingdom and in the world of business, and again, I am extremely honored to um, even be asked to be on your show. Oh, it's my honor. It's my honor. So let's jump right on in. Uh, Certainly would love to hear uh, just how ministry, you know, started for you. Oh, my my God. Um, when you, That's a um, big question, right? And said, <laughs> it, it really is. It really is. When you, when you were um, introducing me and saying, um, young woman, I was saying, oh, my God, she doesn't even know how old I am. <laughs> and, I have, <laughs> and I say that because I've, I've been in ministry for, um, for many, many years. And um, I actually came out of a ministry where I served my spiritual father for 36 years and um, sat up under him as a, as a child. So um, I've been in ministry a, a while. Um, he ordained me as an evangelist back in 2000, um, I believe it was 2005, and then as a pastor, the executive pastor, in 2009. And then in 2014, um, the Lord called me to plant a church in, um, actually in the community that I live in, 
I've been actually pastoring. I founded Greater Hope Restoration Ministry, and we launched in October of 2015. And um, God has been with us. I'm sorry. Actually, oh my God, it was actually October of 2014. So it's been um, it's been almost two years. Oh, my goodness. Awesome. Well, congratulations, certainly, on hanging in there in ministry and being uh, a woman in ministry. I'm sure you have uh, learned just a, a lot in uh, the time you've been uh, pastoring. Um, what, is, what is something that you would say to a, another a female that's getting ready to, to jump into leadership, into ministry? Uh, any advice you have over the last, you know, last, uh, the last years that you have been in ministry? Oh, you know, the the only real advice I can I can give as far as is ministry, um, or somebody beginning in ministry is to be sure that you hear from God. <laughs> you yeah. know, be, be certain that you have heard the um the voice of God. Um pastoring certainly is um an office that you have to be called to because um the work is um it is work and uh it is a twenty four seven position and um you know if we've not if we're not called and if we're not equipped it will it will certainly wear us out and let alone whether we're a male or female um it is a um it is a job that one must be called to um and being a female pastor i thank god that in um in this area of pittsburgh there's not a lot of um um uh, differentiation when it comes to being a male pastor or a female pastor, I did um, come out of a um, um, Baptist organization years ago. Um, the church that I left, we um, we were Baptist in name only, um, but became non-denominational quite a few years ago. And um, back, of course, when I was first starting a ministry, um, I'm, I'm talking 30 some years ago. You know, it was hard for. Um, a woman to be accepted in the role of a pastor. But I thank God that, that we have such a wonderful support system. Um, the bishop that um, our church falls under, uh, Bishop Linwood Lewis, um, is very, very supportive in our ministry. So um, so it, I, I thank God that I'm not having to struggle with, um, um, with my identity as a woman. Amen. Awesome, awesome. Well, that is... Good to hear and encouraging, certainly for uh, any other women that are in pursuing being in ministry uh, are already there. So uh, thank you for that testament. And so I'd love for you to share a little bit about uh, your sister. And I, I read in your in your bio, um, you know, how really there was a, some things in life that really kind of catapulted you to the next um, level. And I want to talk a little. Want you to talk a little bit about your sister and how that all plays into. Your, you know, you're catapulting you into your purpose and your plan for your life. Yeah, that um, that actually play um, plays into my whole life, I guess we we could say. Um, and my my sister and I, Joyce Wilson, um, Pastor Joyce Wilson, um, is her name. Uh, we were only 13 months apart, and um, we did everything together. When I say everything, I mean everything. We and we went to the same college. Um, we never, had never, ever, ever been away from each other. And, um, and that's because our, our parents raised us that way, myself and my, um, my brother. Um, they raised us to, you know, to understand that your best friend um, is your sibling. So she really uh-huh. was my best friend. And we did, um, we did ministry together. We sang together. We traveled the country together. We sang in a group called Ministry. Um, we were um, we got three stellar nods, I believe, in 2008. We're on Bobby Jones Gospel and Word um, um, uh, Network, and you know, just just staying all over the country. And she really was my partner in ministry, my partner in business. As we um, worked on um, helping to begin an after-school program in the area that she lived in, and so many so many things. But in 2000, I'll never forget. It was November 11th of 2011, November 10th. 2011 that um, she was officially diagnosed with um, stage four appendicular cancer, and um, you know the whole time we were going through the going through the fight, um, going through the battle, we were believing God and um, and believing God that um, He was going to heal her, and never saw anything else any different 
in my in my life. Um, but as um, as the time went on, and I began to to see some things and and some different things were happening um, in my life and ministry at the same time. And like I said, we were in the same um, the same church together, and we worked together. And the Lord knows that um, I never would have left her. Um, I never would have moved on to anything that God would have had unless I was able to drag her with me. <laughs> and yeah. um, and because uh, because of, of the fact that our, our our pastor was actually her father-in-law, she was married to um, to the pastor's son. There was no way that she would have left to go with me. And um, you know, when I look at at God's hand in it, and I and I sometimes think. You know, God, couldn't you have done things differently? You know, why? Mm-hmm. You know, why couldn't you have you know, allowed um, allowed there to maybe be a different way for us to separate? But um, but He knew the bond that I had um, with my sister, and it literally was her about three weeks before she passed um, in the worst worst time of her um, her illness. She was in the hospital at that point, and just um, they were. Um, they had her. Uh, they were medicating her because of the pain, and by that time, you know, she was um, she was just all the time screaming out in pain. And, and I remember mm-hmm. I had said some things to the Lord um, concerning my life and some things that I was dealing with, and you know, why can't I be me? And you know, what is it that you want me to do? Where we basically, you know, how we ask God, where are we going with this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. But then when things come into our life, and yeah, they don't make any sense. You're like, what are we doing, God? Where are we going with this? And um, and she on her um, on her deathbed um, told me uh, to let her go. And um, mm-hmm. not only did she say let her go, um, I I remember saying I don't know how. And she said she said yes you do. She said um, she said um, I'm going to be okay. And this is her crying out. I'm I'm being nice and calm and saying it, but she was screaming out to me, saying these things to me. She was saying I'm going to be okay. But she said, but you, she said, it is time for you to go and be you. And it's time for you to go and find out who you are without me. And at that time, um, the Lord had already been dealing with me um, concerning, um, you know, beginning another ministry. And I had no idea exactly what he wanted me to do or that he was really calling me to, um, to plant a church. But I knew that he was calling me into ministry. And um, after she, she passed, which was about three, maybe two weeks or so after that, um, the, the Lord just started moving and dumped the whole church in my, um, in my spirit. And um, wow. I, I literally, there was no effort, there was no labor. My pastor released me um, with a laying on of hands, him and, um, him and his wife, and prayed over me. And um, it was the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. Um, because they were, they literally were my family. My parents, um, our parents died. My mother died the day before my 21st birthday, and my father died when I was 18. So they, um, when my mother died, they literally stepped in and um, took care of us. So they were the only family that I knew. And to have to walk away from that and begin um, from scratch was just um, mind-blowing. But the Lord just opened doors, and we are, um, we're in a beautiful building, something we didn't have to oh labor for. The, I mean, the, um, I got a call from the pastor of the, the church in the building that we were asking what they could do to help us. Um, wow. And they gave us faith in there. We're in there about an hour out of the week, and we are blessed to, um, to basically – have use of the building whenever we need to, and we've been able to launch so many different ministries and bless so many different people. We do a lot of outreach ministry. About 80% of our um, membership uh, literally was from the streets. And um, my God, unchurched, was, unchurched, unchurched, unchurched. I'm talking. Didn't didn't know that there was an older New Testament, and many. I would be preaching, wow. and, you know, I could see the look on their faces if I was talking about Cain and Abel or, or, or Joseph, and um, I'd say, do you all know that story? And they'd <laughs> look at me and shake their heads. <laughs> like, never heard and, of it. <laughs> yeah, look at every God. Sunday, they would come, tears as the word was going forth, tears rolling down their faces and, and crying, hearing the word, 
and to see how God has changed lives. I'm talking about people going from um, being on um, you know, being on assistance and now going back to school and you know, people leaving jobs that they thought that they were stuck at, jobs that were paying minimum wage, um, leaving after 17 years and moving on to better jobs and God blessing them, blessing their finances. And just, I could just go on and on and on. We have a young lady in our church. When she first came, she wore dark glasses and all the time literally had a hat on and all the time was sitting in the back. And, um, but she had a gift and um, had a gift of performing arts. Last year, she wrote her first stage play, and um, it was a blessing. We did it over the Christmas um, holiday, and I was so blown away at her, um, at the ability that was in her. So that's what God is doing um, at Lady Hope yeah. Restoration Ministries. And I'll tell you, I am just, I'm just honored that he would even consider me. I really, really am. My goodness. Uh, listeners, if you just tuned in, uh, you are hearing from the heart of uh, Pastor Cheryl Jones-Ross. Uh, I'm telling you what, here in our, our spotlight uh, interview, we, we spotlight influential women in ministry all the time, so certainly this is right in line with that. Pastor Cheryl, what a, first of all, let me just acknowledge and thank you for being transparent and, and talking about, uh, you know, how you got into ministry and letting, you know, your sister go. That power, that's so powerful. A lot of times we just see, you know, the glitz and the glamour, or we assume uh, those in leadership just have the rosy, sunny stories uh, mm-hmm. to tell us. Yes. But I wanted to make sure that listeners could hear all of us, all of the different paths that that. Uh, can take you to where you need to go and and how this wasn't easy but you did it and God just yeah. blew has blown on it and it's continuing to continue to bless you. So thank you, thank you for sharing. Woo, oh, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. So then how did Heels magazine and that's H E E L listeners, how did that come about? <laughs> You're editor in chief for that. Where does that plug into oh, this? Oh my god. Well, we um we began our women's ministry um again because so many of our women um, needed to be um, to be ministered to, and uh, we began a women's ministry and started off with our Hills Women's Conference. But um, it, the, the magazine it just happened. Another thing that happened so fast. I remember um, I had gone to a conference and um, I had actually submitted my story to several different magazines, and um, you know some I didn't hear back from, and um, a couple others were like we would be interested in you know your story and, and write this 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 this. And I got a word, and this was so profound, and, and I believe that this word is for um, everybody that is listening. Why wait for somebody to do for you what you can do for yourself? And as I sat, um, the Lord uh, began to dump and pour on me how to do this magazine. And I tell you, that first issue was done in about two weeks. And um, we began to pull on the women from the church and, um, you know, ask them, you know, who can write? You know who would do poetry, and we had we um, we actually did the last two magazines. We did a whole photo shoot with the women from our church that had some had never done anything like that in their life, never been in front of a camera. Um, you know, um, we went out and, and bought clothes from the clothes mentor and um, just did a whole a whole um, um, fashion shoot. And um, the magazine really began as a way to um, begin to. Um, pull gifts out of, out of the people in our ministry and, um, you know, teach them how to write, you know, get them interested in fashion, get them in, interested in photography, get them interested in, in business, um, you know, doing um, um, just um, interested in finding out what their purpose is, um, yeah. finding out, you know, what, what was in them that they never thought that they would be able to um, be able to do. And that's where um, where Hills Gospel Magazine came from. I'm hoping one day, you know, that um, I'll be able to hand it over, totally hand it over to the women at our church and you not know, have to babysit it for a while and be able to move on to whatever else God has for us. So um, that's where that started. It really, there really isn't a, a huge, huge story. It was just, again, hearing God's voice. And um, really wanting to be able, even myself, to be able to use the gifts that I have. Um, I do all the all the editing. I do all the graphic art work. Um, 
And of course, it's time consuming, and I would love to. <laughs> I would love to be able to <laughs> yeah. hand it over, <laughs> over to somebody else. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but right now, I know that's where where I have to be until I can um, until I can train our women the way that we're um, that we're working on doing to be able to handle it. But what a practical way! Like it turned it's it turned into a ministry tool. What a practical. Yeah. You know what? When it may not have, you know, that might not have been the original original thought, but it turned yeah. into a ministry tool. And you know, some people get stuck if if they feel like, well, I want mine to be printed like Ebony magazine, and if they can't do it that way, they don't do anything. Uh, yeah. You know. So do you see people just get stuck? They won't move because they have this grandiose maybe theme and way of think of how things should happen, and then they get stuck. Yeah. And, and God, um, you know, I always hear him say, and I share this with our, with our people, what's, what's that in your hand? You know, our, yeah. our hand is a, um, um, a representation of power. You know, what's that in your power? What's on the inside of you that you are able to, um, to use um, to, yeah, that will catapult you to your next level or that will move you towards your purpose or to your destiny? Often we, just like you said, we look at things and, you know, we think that they're small or it means nothing, but the Bible does talk about um, not despising um, the day of small beginnings and not, you know, not despising that, that what we think is small. Um, right. The boy with the, the fish and the um, two loaves of bread, you know, in comparison to the multitude, that was small. That was, that was a yeah. small thing to him. But look at what God did because he was willing to give what he had. You know, he didn't have steaks, you know, he didn't have, um, he didn't have shrimp, he didn't have all of that stuff. He just had, you know, two fish and five loaves of bread, and God took it. Um, he took it and he multiplied it. And that's what the Lord would do. We just have to be willing. The Bible says if we're willing and obedient, because often yeah. we're willing, but we're not obedient. And then often, you know, we're, um, we're obedient, but we're not willing, and we'll do it kicking and screaming. <laughs> He <laughs> says that if we're willing and obedient, that's how we're going to eat, and we're going to eat of the um, the good of the land. All right, well said. How can listeners uh, get a copy? Be on the subscription list for Hills Magazine. Well, um, they can go directly to our website, um, and it is Hills H E E L S hyphen Magazine dot com. And um, there is a um, there is a link on there where they can actually order the magazine. Um, we do have hard copies um, that can be ordered. Um, it takes about three weeks for a hard copy to come in because they are printed in um, I, I believe they're printed in Norway. Um, but the hard oh. copies are beautiful. They they really are. And also too, um, if anybody is interested in submitting uh, something for the magazine, we are taking submissions and we do have a team that will look over the submission and let you all know, um, you know, if your article has been accepted. And all, all they have to do is um, email us at info at heels-magazine.com. All right, there you go. And I am honored to say I have an article in the last, issue yeah. uh, in the last recently released issue so check it out there and it's nice you allow the um, digital version to be to be viewed online yes yes because everybody can't order you know can't order the hard copy and you know right now we're you know even though we should be in it to try to make money right now we're um we're not there yet <laughs> so. uh-huh. you're so in seed so in seed yeah we're, we're so in seed yes Okay, so not only Hills Magazine, but also a uh, TV show. So you have your own uh, TV show, and the ministry has their own your own TV show. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, and that's another exciting ad- adventure. Um, it is called GHRM Live. It looks like it says live, but it's actually live. And, um, ah. you know, it's just um, where we do, you know, we do some interviews with, with people, um, local people and, um, you know, videos that will help um, people to, uh, again, to um, find out what their purpose is. And also we do want to highlight what people are doing. Um, 
you know, positive things that people are doing, people that are helping the community or, or people that have a business or whatever. But um, our people at, at our church uh, work on that as well. Um, you know, we have our own camera crew. We have our own um, media crew. Uh, these people never knew anything about running a camera until they, um, until, you know, they, until God taught them, literally. So, wow. Um, the, sh- the show airs um, every, I believe it's every Sunday now at 9.30 on PCTV 21. And I do believe that we're actually in the process of um, branching out into some other locations um, across the country. And I'm, I'm excited about that door that, that God is seeming to be opening for us. Wonderful, wonderful. So lots going on. I think this has just been great to spotlight um, you, Pastor Cheryl, and your ministry and all that you are doing um, really in the community. Do you all have any upcoming events you want to shout out? Um, No. <laughs> well, you got a lot of the magazine and TV, you know, that's <laughs> in church. You know, what, tell us about your services. Tell us about your service time. <laughs> Well, um, service time um, is at 1245. Um, we do have coffee and donut time from 12 noon to, um, to 1230. But we start at 1245 every Sunday, and we have what we call 215 Bible studies uh, from Wednesday, on Wednesday from 7 to 8. Um, we teach the adults and also have our Feed My Lambs Children's Ministry at that time as well from 7 to 8 on Wednesday. And, of course, we have women's ministry, men's ministry, uh, youth ministry on Friday nights. Every Friday night is a Boys and Girls Club in Carnegie, PA. So lots going on. <laughs> lots going on. Visit our website. Yes, yes, I'm please sorry. give that out. Visit our website at um, ghrm-online.com, and you can actually see all that we're doing. I should say all that God oh, is doing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And what's the address, um, the location for services? Um, 1700 Bower Hill Road, Pittsburgh, PA, 15243. All right, wonderful. So the goal of my show is to motivate, excite, and influence. And my last question is, what continues to motivate you? Um, my sister's death. And and I know that the you know the word of God of course is is the foundation, and I want to please Him, but um, knowing that um, her death was for nothing, and seeing that souls are being brought to Christ um, because of that sacrifice keeps me going every day. Well said, well said. Well, I look forward to staying connected with you. Thank you so much for featuring me in Heels God Magazine. Bless you. Yes, 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 yes. And Hopefully being a part of the hashtag. You on a regular basis. <laughs> yes, and I am looking forward to that. I am looking forward to that. And thank you so much for being a part of the hashtag Coaching with Vet Facebook community as well. Thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. So left, that, thank you. I am enjoying it. Oh, wonderful. All right, well, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up our first segment there, Pastor Cheryl Jones Ross, you got all the information there. You know how we do. Uh, you can check back in the archives and the podcast to re-listen to everything. Um, what a powerful, powerful segment. So we're moving into our next segment. We're going to take a quick commercial break. But listen, don't go anywhere, uh, you know, not unless you need to get some lemonade or something like that. That's okay. Uh, you want to be uh, hanging out with us here. We're going to be talking to Pastor Deborah Sanford Smith, oh, my goodness, missionary, author. Uh, she has a story to tell. New book out, All Things Well, All Things Well. I'm telling you what, I've seen all five-star reviews on Amazon, and we want to hear about uh, her life, her faith, her hope, her love, her journey. Uh, you don't want to miss it. I'm telling you what. All right, we're going to a quick commercial break, and we're going to be back. Don't you move. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Charvette will be back after this. Hello, we are 123jobzone.com, an online job search portal. We are user-friendly, and if you're searching for a job, with us, it's easy as 123. Step 1, go to www.123jobzone.com and register as a job seeker. Step 2, once registered, upload your resumes. Step 3, 
Get connected with employers looking for people like you who are ready and willing to work. Don't forget to follow 123 Job Zone on Twitter and Facebook to find out more about our upcoming job fairs. What are you waiting for? Stop by 123jobzone.com today. Good luck with your job search. Spiritual Food for Thought, 31 Inspirational Quotes to Jumpstart Your Day by LaTanya Boyd consists of inspirational messages that offer daily words of empowerment, promote spiritual growth, and development in the Lord Jesus Christ for your day-to-day living. Spiritual Food for Thought, 31 Inspirational Quotes to Jumpstart Your Day, available now on Kindle, ebook, and paperback. Log on to www.letiboyd.com. Are you starting a new business, releasing a CD, writing a new book? Consider Mitchell Productions for your web design services. Visit www.mitchell-productions.com for portfolio samples, specials, and package prices. Remember, a website is not a luxury item. It's a necessity. Check out Mitchell-Productions.com or find them at Facebook.com slash Mitchell Productions. She's here to motivate, excite, and influence you. She's Charvette Mitchell. Charvette Charvette Mitchell. Mitchell. It's the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show with in-depth interviews from today's leading authors, gospel artists, stars that you want to know about. And now, Charvette Mitchell. All right, welcome back, welcome back again to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show, broadcasting from the capital city of Richmond, Virginia, but heard all across the world wide web. We're so excited to have all of you tuning in from Twitter. Hey, Twitter. Hey, uh, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Charvette. All those that are hanging out in the chat room, hello. Those that are coming in from Facebook, Go ahead and click follow over there, facebook.com slash Charvette. And all of those that are listening from our mobile app and Charvette.com and our broadcast stations, we say hey. All right, so listen, we're ready to move right on in to our next segment. My guest has been hanging out in the virtual uh, green room, so I know she's been enjoying some virtual snacks. So we have coming up to the mic a missionary, author, Pastor Deborah Sanford Smith is joining us. New book out, All Things Well. And I'm telling you what, uh, we're excited. We're going running to the green room now to bring Pastor Deborah uh, up live on the air. Hello, welcome, Pastor Deborah. Welcome to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Hello there. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, we are glad to have you, uh, excited. Uh, big shout out for, to all those that are hanging out with us in the Facebook event. It's just an online party today. <laughs> and we're all ready for a party, so that's good news. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So I've shared just a little bit uh, about you, but I want to uh, have you talk a little bit, as I did with my last guest, uh, about how ministry kind of was birthed and started for you. How did this all start for you? Okay. Well, actually, I was, you know, just your normal average child uh, raised in a, a church going family. And um, just grew up uh, loving the Lord and having a relationship with Him. But at a very young age, I would say about 13, I knew that the Lord had called me into mission, and I just knew mm. that I would be going to Africa one day. Uh, and so I've, I've never, ever lost sight of that. I just It was one of those clear calls that you just knew um, there was no doubt whatsoever. My husband, on the other hand, told me, don't you ever say the word Africa to me again. Uh, So (laughs) I knew that God would have to do an amazing work in him as well. But in typical God fashion, he did. And and my husband knew quite clearly that we were supposed to go to Africa. So we did. We moved to Kenya uh, and lived there for about five years uh, with our youngest daughter, Arden and did some mission work. We just did everything imaginable while we were there. Our number one focus was always souls. Um, we just mm. felt like we were changing the world one soul at a time. And uh, we did that with water outreach and, and in local churches and just any way we could spread the love of Jesus Christ, that's what we did. And that was our goal while we were there in Africa. Um, so we've seen a lot and done a lot, and we have just known God, and we have known how real he is and how 
He works in every aspect of our lives. We've seen him just do amazing things. And so we, we've had a, a great um, abiding faith in the Lord um, for many, many years. And the book, um, All Things Well, is, it, it talks about that relationship and about knowing God and knowing his character and that the, that is what it takes to hold any of us when we face this thing of life, it's called life, this journey that we all do. Um, and I tell people all of the time, your journey may not be uh, a stage four terminal cancer diagnosis. Your journey may not be anything that is life-threatening, but nevertheless, it is your journey. And your journey is the most important thing that you have going on in your life right now. And so um, I just, I'm so excited to share the book with everyone today because I just know that this book, All Things Well, will give people the hope and the encouragement that they need to face the challenges that we all face all the time on our own journey. Amen. And from uh, somebody with the voice of experience, uh, so they they are getting this guidance from you. But I got to jump back to something you said. You and your family, you and your husband, And your daughter picked up and moved to Kenya, not just mission trips and you came back to the luxury of the United States. And we have quite a funny story there, actually, because we left um, having bought one-way tickets to Kenya um, just because God said go. He never said anything about Mm. coming home. Uh, so Mm -hmm. And we literally had $150 to our name. No 501, you know, no retirement, no 401k, no, 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 nothing. Literally $150 to our name. And we had a small Baptist church uh, that my mother attended, actually, that had committed to supporting us with $50 a month. And as soon as we got that first support, I said, praise God, we have support, let's go. And we flew out of the country, uh, having never been there before, to Kenya on one-way tickets, with a, our youngest child, who was 10 at the time, uh, with $150 to our name. And we lived there for almost five years. Um, we later oh got God. deported by immigration uh, while we were in the process of getting documents completed. And they looked at us in the most astonished look you have ever seen and said, how did you get into this country on one-way tickets? And I just looked at them dumbfounding, and I said, well, because God said to. And they said, no, it is illegal. It is impossible for you to enter on a one-way ticket. You must have a return ticket. And I said, well, I assure you we do not because God told us to come here. He never said to leave. So I tell you, we have seen God do things. Yes. What kind of, what manner of faith is this? Oh, but that's the God we serve. That He is yeah. so big and He's so mighty, and, and it's all Him. Um, and so we had some experience in operating in faith prior to this medical diagnosis in 2013. And that is what helped me write the book, All Things Well. So tell us, tell us about that. So certainly... Uh, anyone would, you know, a diagnosis of stage uh, four colon cancer. So number one, I guess even the colon cancer, which is you, we hear more, it seems like for women more about breast cancer and other areas. But um, you get this this shocking news. Uh, you know, what what are your initial reactions, thoughts, and all of that? Well, um, initially, I. I knew I had been feeling unwell for quite some time and had done some doctor's appointments and what have you, but never, ever expected something this serious. Um, Mm. And when we initially had an ultrasound done and they said, you have a mass on your ovary and it's very, very large, my initial thought was um, ovarian cancer because my mother had passed away with ovarian cancer. And so I came home that day, and I just said, no, I reject that. I just reject that. I've I've prayed ever since that we got that diagnosis with my mother that I would not have that. And so I'm not going to let the enemy put that fear on me until I'm dealing with some facts. I'm just going to reject all of that. 
And it turned out to be a couple of weeks later before we actually got a diagnosis of, yes, this is some kind of cancer. And long, long story short, we ended up with a a biopsy at MD Anderson Hospital in Houston, and it said it was colon. It was not, excuse me, not ovarian. So, of course, we were just blown away, just a complete Mm -hmm. shock. It's not anything that you ever expect to hear. And I was was young. I was only 45 years old at the time. Um, And so that's, you know, we were just not expecting that at all. Um, Our reaction at first, because of experience and and, and just knowing the Word of God was, and I, I go back to this like Thumper from Bambi, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Right. And so <laughs> our initial reaction was let's stay quiet because I could say a lot of things right now that I would have to take back later and repent of and try to overcome because words are so powerful. They're creative. And, uh, you know, God created everything with his word. And so, yes. uh, honestly, our initial reaction was just stay quiet. I need to hear from God. I need to know what he says about this, and then I will repeat what he says. And so that was the initial, that was the initial reaction. So all things well, the title, tell us how you got to the title of this book. Well, it became a catchphrase, if you will, of mine um, very early on. I began posting just updates to family and friends on Facebook because so many people, uh, obviously all over the world, were wanting to know what was going on and how things were going. And Facebook was just an easy way to communicate to that number of people. So I would begin yes. posting little medical updates, and I, um, I just – began signing off of every one of them with the word, God is good, and he does all things well. And uh-huh. so many people picked up on that, and they would, they would actually begin to tell other people, God is good, and he does all things well. And my, my heart behind that was because I wanted people to know that God is not doing this to me. He is not punishing me. He is not angry with me. He doesn't think evil thoughts towards me he's good and he does all things well and so I I wanted to reject any notion that you know why is God doing this to her and um, and so every time I would write something or say something it just became a little catchphrase and so um, when when the book came about and we were thinking about the title I actually thought of another title and my loving daughters and my husband immediately said oh no that won't work Uh, (laughs) honest feedback from the family (laughs) exactly yes and so um I worked very closely with Tamika Hall I'm sure you know Tamika and I think she is absolutely amazing at TamikaInc.com she is incredible so I ran the yes I ran the title by her also and so we all just decided on all things well and the moment that I wrote that, I said, yes, Lord, that's it. That, that's yes. it. Um, My <laughs> goodness. Yeah. So, and all things well, um, I'm hanging out on Amazon right now. I see all five-star, um, all five-star reviews. Uh, one reviewer, Brock, he said, I just finished reading your book. Wow. It was so energizing. You did an amazing job sharing your story your love of God, and your undeniable faith, all while making us ponder our own journeys uh, uh, this life has brought us. So that's a a live uh, review there. Another reviewer, Jennifer, from Amazon, All Things Well, is an awesome testimony of God's grace. Deborah has allowed God to use her situation for his glory. Thank you, Deborah, for sharing your journey. My goodness, and I think about when I hear all things well, I think about the the uh, Shunammite woman whose son was, was dead. Yeah. And as she was making her way and the servant came out to greet her, when, a, when the prophet saw her coming, she didn't even acknowledge the son's death. She just said, it is well, and she kept on, kept on going. 
Yes. Yes. My yes. God. Because all things are well regardless of our circumstances, regardless mm-hmm. of what we're going through. All things are well. We can have a peace that truly passes understanding, and we can know that God has us in the palm of his hand. In fact, one time in the very, very early stages, I was crying, and I said, Lord, a mass inside of my body that size, and I was holding out my hands trying to picture this large Mm -hmm. mass. And I said, Lord, this is so big. It's huge. And immediately he said to me, Yes, it is big in your body, but if you will put it in the palm of my hand, it will be microscopic. Yes, God. And I just started shouting (laughs) and praising God. Yes. And, you know, he gives us those shifts. He gives us those moments. And then in the book I talk about you have to go back to those moments. There are so many times that I've laid in my bed and said, Lord, this is big, and I have to go back to that moment where he says, yes, child, it is, but if you'll put it in my hand, it's microscopic. And that's the challenge. That, that's where we all are. Is it, are we going to give our issues and our circumstances and our journeys, are we going to give those to him and let him carry them? Um, and that, that's what I hope I've accomplished um, with this book. I hope I get some people to see the character and the nature of God, that he loves us. All of his thoughts towards us are good uh, he sent his son to die for us because he loved us and he wanted to redeem us. So I just, I really want people to get a hold of what a good, good, loving father we have. Amen. And he's loving to all of us, every, every last one of us. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Pastor Deborah, tell people how they can get a copy of All Things Well. Okay, it is um, available at Amazon. Uh, the paperback and the Kindle uh, version are both available at Amazon. Um, they can get that there. Also, Barnes & Noble, um, they can get it there. Um, and then I, I did a book launch page today, and it's Deborah Sanford Smith, All Things Well. They can get it there as well. Um, but while we're talking about these things, I'll go ahead and tell you that um, you can find me on Facebook. Obviously, a lot of people are in the event room there. It's yes. author Deborah Sanford Smith. Um, also on Twitter, it's Deborah Sanford Smith. It's actually at Days of Elisha, which is our ministry name. Um, Instagram, Deborah Sanford Smith. And uh, let me give you our website as well. It's www.daysofelisha.org. And that's Elisha with a S H A dot org. Um, and then our email address is daysofelisha at yahoo.com. So uh, a lot of ways to connect. Um, they can definitely find me. Probably the easiest way to buy the book at this time is on Amazon. Um, and the, you can just do Amazon and then search for All Things Well, and it just pops right up. All right, it pops right up. There you have it. You won't even have uh, any struggle at all with it. So let's let's talk a little bit. I want you to share certainly about um, your your ministry and um, the area you're in, location, and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, actually, my husband Jerry and I are the founders and directors of Days of Elisha Ministries, and it's an independent um, ministry. It's five hundred one c three registered with the government. Uh, so we're all all set in stone and good to go there. But we we actually formed Days of Elisha Ministries because we, we knew what God had called us to do in going to Africa and specifically where he wanted us to go. And we, uh, we tried to work with some sending organizations, and they wanted us to go into different places and do a little different thing. And we never just had a piece about that because we were so clear in our calling. So we decided mm-hmm. to just to form the independent organization um, and go and do what we knew God had called us to do. And um, so we did. We were there, like I told you, for almost five years. Then we moved back to the States in 2012, and we did not know why. We were so blown away. At, <laughs> we just were like, <laughs> we pioneered that work in Africa. We walked everywhere that we went. Um, it was dirt, dirt, dirt everywhere, dusty roads. It was, it, you know, we had nothing, like I told you, when we went there. So yeah. in five years, we had accumulated a lot of things. We had a vehicle. 
We had a home where we were hosting mission teams from the states to come and do missions work. So oh, when yeah. God said, go back to the states, we were at that moment, we were like, really? <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> like, Lord, you told us to come here. We got ourselves Lord. straight. Now there's another shift. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, exactly. That and sounds so, like God. <laughs> and it is exactly right. You know, but we determined very early on that he was running the show. Um, and so yeah, yeah. we we came back home, and it was at that time that I started feeling really, really sick. And so we knew that God had us where he needed us for my care. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. And so that's just been incredible. Uh, we do still have missions work going on in Kenya at this time um, through local indigenous peoples there. Um, we built a couple of churches while we were there work with a missions, uh, a children's home and a school. And so we have a lot of ongoing things that we facilitate. Um, we have a director over there. Her name is Faith. She is an amazing woman of God. Um, her daughters, Cynthia and Trista, they actually lived with us in our home when we were in Kenya. And this past year, glory to God, we got Cynthia here. Uh, she lived with us for six months and started high school. So she oh, is in wow. Kenya right now, but she's the plan is for her to come back in August to start school again in August here. So um, God just has blessed us uh, beyond measure. It's just incredible. Absolutely and incredible. If some, yes, absolutely. And if someone's listening saying, I would like to, um, you know, give, if, if they could give towards some of the missions, because, you know, they can say, okay, they, you know, they've been there. Um, and so you kind of know what what the needs are, you know, ground zero yes. there. Uh, how can people yes. contribute? The best way to contribute for something like that is uh, through our website, www.daysofelisha.org. There's a link there for giving, um, PayPal, credit card, whatever they choose. Or um, there's also a mailing address there that they'll see on the website uh, if they prefer to send in a check or something like that. That's That's the way they can do that. And I will tell you that we are planning um, at the end of July, July the 27th, we are planning to go to Kenya to do a mission trip. Um, I have been invited to speak to a women's conference there where about 7,000 women will be in attendance. And to share my testimony and to share this journey um, and to share the book, All Things Well. Um, And so that's super exciting. Um, Also was asked to be on a TV show in Kenya that's, Um, seen in many nations and literally has millions of viewers so it excites me to know that the enemy thought he had a plan but I'm going to tell you what God's purpose is way bigger than the enemy's plan and if we will let him have his purpose in these things we will see him glorified and so um, we are trying our best to raise the funds we need about seven thousand dollars for airline tickets with mm-hmm. everything I've had going on with my health, we just we normally are very active in fundraising and you know different barbecues and events and things like that, and we just have not been able to do those things. So we're truly calling out to God, trusting, believing, and just waiting to see how He is going to do this thing. Um, and so, if anybody wants to give towards that, that would be greatly appreciated as well. Amen. 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 So in a sea, so in a sea. So I just wanted to give opportunity for listeners that may be listening in and you were hearing and you want to say, I want to help. There is your opportunity. Uh, but then you can also get all things, uh, pick up all things well, uh, as we've mentioned, all of the links there and all of the connection points. Living uh, here in the States versus um, Kenya, you know, a lot of times people say, you know, we're all more alike than we are different. Would you have that assessment that just human beings, we are much more alike than we are different? I tell people all the time, people are people all over the world. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yes, I would agree. I would agree with that assessment. We all have different cultural Um, stances on things, you know, but the heart of people, um, we all need love. We all need a Savior. We were all created. There's a a void inside of us that will never be filled until we we fill it with God. Um, And so basically people are people all over the world. 
um, we all long for the same thing, um, to feel safe, to feel needed, to feel loved, um, and for the love of our Heavenly Father. There you have it, listeners. A live and in living color, uh, an account <laughs> that you can that you can take and you can that you can trust. All things well. Uh, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And shout out definitely to Latanya Boyd, uh, yes, book ma'am. marketing consultant. Woohoo! Friend Latanya of the show, sponsor Boyd of the show. Is a, she is amazing. Um, she just absolutely amazes me. She keeps me going and she keeps me straight and she has helped me so much. I do not know what I would do without her. Um, and if anybody, anybody needs somebody like her, they need to look her up. She's at www.latboyd.com. Hashtag rock. Um, and so <laughs> what we are doing, um, and I, I thank her and Tamika Hall so much. They were absolutely a God connection for me. Um, I began praying years ago for the Lord to rightly connect us in ministry. Yeah. And this, uh, these two people are absolutely an answer to prayer uh, for that prayer. All right, and we love both of them again. So Tamika Hall, she will get you straight with your book cover and much more she does on just helping you write the book and all of that. And then uh, once you have that and as you are having that put together, then Latanya Boyd is that book marketing coach and book publicist and all of that. So uh, big shout out to them. They are friends to the show. All right, so my last question for you, the goal of my show is to motivate, excite, and influence, and we want to know what continues to motivate you. My answer to that question is so, so simple. I live to glorify my Father in heaven. Um. With the scripture, Matthew five sixteen, that says that men can see our good works and our Father in heaven can get glory. And so I've, throughout this journey, this has become more and more relevant to me. And I always ask myself, does my attitude glorify God? Do my words glorify God? Does my mindset glorify God? And sometimes yeah. I can answer yes and sometimes I can answer no and I have to fix it. Um, but it motivates me because I want people to see see that we can do good things in spite of our circumstances and in spite of our illness, in spite of whatever's going on, we can still do good things and glorify God. And and that really motivates me. I want people to, um, I'm kind of rough with people sometimes. I'm not very good at taking excuses off of people like I don't have enough money to go to Africa. Hello, I went with $150 to my name. So uh-huh. I like to spur people on and, and say, you know, so what if you're sick? Let's do something. Um, I want my father to be glorified through my work and through my actions. Well said, well said. Well, thank you so much for stopping by the show and just sharing uh, your heart uh, with us and all of the backstory. Uh, enough of the backstory that entices the listener to say, "Okay, I need to, I need more of that," and I want to pick up my copy of All Things Well. And uh, just thank you for being a great representation of faith, really, uh, in this day and age. <laughs> Yeah. I also want to That's mention that is. I do. I am doing bookings for any public speaking or anything like that, too. So if anybody out there is listening and they think this might be a good fit, they can always get in touch yeah. with LaTanya Boyd um, uh, or with me and, um, and see what we can do together. I love the opportunity to share. Absolutely. Uh, women, conferences, symposiums, all, all of that would be great. Uh, great, great, great. All right. Well, thank you so much again for stopping by. Thank you so much, Charvette. I have enjoyed it. This has been a blast. I'm very, very honored that you had me. Oh, thank you, thank you. And thank you to all of the listeners uh, that were hanging out in the Facebook event. We appreciate you uh, so much. Thank you, guys. All right, that's going to be a wrap for today's show. Uh, as always, we love you guys for listening in. If um, you heard this and you were like, oh, my goodness, I really have friends and people that need to hear this show, you know what you can do. You can send them back over to charvette.com. They'll be able to hear the podcast version of the show uh, and check us out there. 
As always, you can connect with me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Charvette, facebook.com slash Charvette, connect there. You can also, if you are a female entrepreneur or you're a female that wants to be an entrepreneur, I personally invite you to my Facebook group. It's a private group. A closed group, and you just go to Facebook.com, and the groups just look for hashtag Coaching with Vet. That's my nickname, Vet, V-E-T-T-E. Coaching with Vet, hashtag Coaching with Vet. That's my Facebook group, um, and I'm telling you what, we give uh, coaching, mentoring, training, tips that will just help you all along the way in all kinds of aspects. So I invite you to join me, Coaching with Vet. Um, pick up my free gift I have for you, coachingwithvet.com. If you are in promotion mode, if you pr- are promoting anything, you need my four uh, four part video course, completely completely complimentary to you. Just go to coachingwithvet.com to get that uh, and grab that. So that is going to be a wrap for today's show. Listen, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss next week. Not one minute of it. Uh, you don't want to. So make sure you lot and we're gonna see you guys. Later. Hello. Live from Richmond, Virginia, you have been listening to the Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Connect with her at charvette.com. And until next week, stay motivated, excited, and influenced. The Charvette Mitchell Radio Show. Signing off. <laughs>